Hello, my beautiful bookish friends. Welcome back to my channel. So, uh, <laughs> I owe you guys a reading wrap up. Yeah, I said at the beginning of the year I was going to be doing them more often, and then I did them, and then I stopped. Because April, I basically barely read a singular word. Actually, I didn't read a singular word, I listened to many words. Uh, because I didn't pick up any physical books. May, again, a lot of audiobooks, a lot of things from the library, uh, a lot of good books. Grand Wonderful. But June, I truly feel like I got back into reading uh, the way I wanted to. So let's talk about what I read. In April, I only read two books. I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I was really excited for this book. I was anticipating it. I was ready. And it fell a little flat for me. I gave it 3.5 stars. Mostly because now that I've read what this is my fourth Allie Hazelwood book in her like Steminist series I feel like I'm reading the same book over and over now this one did have a fun fake dating plot in this one Elise is a or Elsie I think it's Elsie is it Elise or Elsie I think it's Elsie um she fake dates as a side gig and I really liked how it talked about that even though STEM is such an important field, a lot of people are still underpaid, especially if they're um, adjunct professors and kind of that thing. That was all very cool. I liked all of that. Um, but she fake dates and ends up fake dating a guy like for pay, meets his brother and ends up really liking him. But the brother kind of doesn't like her, but he works in the same field. There's a lot that goes on in this that makes it very funny, very chaotic feeling, very convoluted. And a lot of it I laughed at. I, I thought the book was funny. It was just really long. Even listening to it on audio, I felt like maybe we could have cut the last like 100 pages or so. Like in here, I feel like we could have cut some pages. However, I did give it 3.5 because I liked the characters. I liked the romance. It was, it was a quintessential Allie Hazelwood book. It fits in with the first three that she's written. And I have Not In Love and I'm going to read that one too. It's just I felt like I definitely, there was a lot of similarities between this book and the other ones that she's writing. Next we have a book that is already in a brand new home with someone who I hope enjoys it more than I did and that is Starling House. I got this one because it had a very like house is alive, the house is a character within the book, family secrets, family drama, but also just not for me. Like the elements were there of everything I should love about this book but I didn't. Uh this one I have to look was another 3.5. I liked the dual POV. I liked the idea that this town is kind of riddled with all these events that happen that this particular family somehow always gets caught up in. Uh, however, the twists were very predictable for me and the romance that was in it was just really unnecessary, especially the way that it kind of played out. It felt like an afterthought and I don't think it needed to be there. Part of what made it feel icky for me um is the girl the main character in the book I think there's a bit of an age gap in the romance or it felt like there was um the main girl is his maid and like repairman kind of for his house and then they end up kind of together and it just felt like a weird power dynamic because he's like rich and she's not. And he starts paying for things, giving her a place to stay. Felt like a little bit Stockholm syndrome -y. So, was not a super fan of that. Uh, and that's why I sent it off to someone else. And that's all I read for April was Love Theoretically and Starling House. Now, in May, I started with Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Everyone's been talking about this book. The shock, the awe, the not. Everyone is, was talking about, right? 
I listen to it over audio. And I'm not a big Omegaverse girl. I do enjoy, you know, a vampire werewolf situation. I was not shocked by anything in this book. I was not turned off by anything in this book. Like, nothing about everything that people are freaking out about was I, like, oh my god, like, screaming about. I actually gave this book 2.5, mostly because I felt like the character development was so low. I knew very little about these characters by the time I was done that I actually felt like, oh, this is definitely the first book in a series. And then everyone was like, it's a standalone. I was like, okay, I know nothing about these people. Like, yes, it was a cute little romance with the whole saga or whatever, but it just felt like it could have cooked for another 50 pages. Like, I could have taken out some of the like political explanations of how the vampire werewolf thing works and put in more about the characters themselves. They felt very surface level and like I could have plugged any character from any book into their places and it would have been fine. Um, yeah, luckily I borrowed that one from the library and I'm not going to be purchasing it so I didn't lose out on anything there. However, again, I felt like like, I really like Allie Hazelwood as an author. I just feel like she did not hit her stride in this. She just announced a sports romance. So I'm hoping I like that one a little better when that does come out. But the next one, next book I loved, I gave a 4.5. And that was Becky Lynch's book, The Man, Not Your Average Average Girl. It's just a recounting of her life and mostly her wrestling career, um, how she ended up getting into wrestling and what it's done for her life, how she met her husband, her uh, her becoming a mom, all of those things. So if you're not a wrestling fan, you're probably not going to like this book. Um, and I'm a huge Becky Lynch fan. So reading this, like some of it I knew. Other things I didn't. The more recent stuff I didn't know, she talks, she's very private about like her daughter and her marriage. Um, but she talked a lot about it in here, which was cool to read and kind of see the inner workings of her career, her love life. There's also just some really funny anecdotes in here that I was a fan and watching her at the time to kind of know what was going on behind the scenes it was really fun to learn and why I ranked this book so highly. And I'll probably never read it again, but like I would like her to sign it one day, so I'm gonna keep it forever. We have the unfortunate side effects of heartbreak and witchcraft or something like that. I don't know. I did not finish this book. I read, well, I listened to 40 pages on audio, which you know it's bad when I DNF an audiobook, and I hated it. The characters in this book already in the first 40 pages were insufferable to me. It was pitched as Gilmore Girls, which I've never watched, uh, mixed with Practical Magic, and I didn't get any of that. And I've never watched Practical Magic either, which I know is probably shocking to a lot of people. However, I could not get past it. And then I found out that the recipes included in the book were stolen from blogs and never given credit because um, there's little recipes in each of the book or in each of the chapters. And that it's actually a like cautionary tale against using witchcraft and very deeply based in like Christian rhetoric. Um, I didn't even get far enough in the book to get that. I could see how it got that way. So I'm happy I DNF'd it. And anyone who wants to read it, um, you know, I would caution you when reading it using the witchy like faith aspects of it, the spiritual aspects of it and the practices of witchcraft as like a gimmick to get it to sell basically. So yeah, didn't rate it because I didn't finish it. I did listen to from the library City of Ghost by Victoria Schwab. I have not enjoyed V.E. Schwab's other works. I didn't really like Addie LaRue. Um, I read another one. I tried to read one of her other middle grades before and just kind of decided she wasn't for me. However, City of Ghosts was really fun. It is about a girl who can see ghosts because she went through a near-death experience and now she's like a medium and her parents are paranormal investigators and don't know that she can speak to ghosts. So it was really cute. It was a cute little middle grade. I gave it 3.5. I'm gonna be 
continuing on with the series because they go to haunted locations around the world as part of the show they're filming. I think it's cute. It's a nice palette cleanser. So yeah, I'm gonna continue with that. And this is gonna be an unpopular opinion. I listened to Divine Rivals and I didn't like it. The idea of like these competing journalists during this like war with the gods, it's definitely supposed to be like World War II, World War One, World War II. Um, all of that stuff intrigued me deeply. But as I was listening, I stopped caring more and more and more as it went on. The idea of them not knowing who the other is and these magical kind of letters, that was all very cool to me, but it just felt like too much was going on. I couldn't invest in one thing or the other. I couldn't get invested with the lore of the gods, which then meant I couldn't get invested in the war part. And then I couldn't get invested in the main character's story and her grief and her issues. And then the, the rich writer whose name I can't remember. Like all of it was just a little bit too much at one time. So I finished it. I gave it 3.5, but I'm not going to continue on with the series. But the next book saved me from a slump because it is as good as people say. And it's a good girl's guide to murder. I had never read Holly Jackson before, so starting with this seemed like a good place because everyone rants and raves about this book. This for me was so good and I highly recommend it as audio because there are podcast elements. So there's a full cast. The set, It sounds different when it, stuff's being recorded versus they're just talking. So it's a very cool, like immersive experience, I would say. But the mystery in this is there is a cold case that this girl takes on as her final project for her senior year. Um, her name is Pippa. They call her Pip. Um, and it's definitely based off like serial, if anyone remembers when that whole podcast thing happened. Um, but it's a cold case that mixes like serial and pretty little liars. This like small town with all these secrets and everyone's kind of involved, but then no one's really involved sort of thing. I loved every minute of this. I was listening to this in the car when I was driving. I was listening to it when I was at work doing shipment things. Like I was obsessed with this. I gave it a 4.5 and the only reason it loses half a point is because they killed the dog. And that's not a spoiler of anything. It's a warning. I was not excited about that. Everything else was fine. We could have just skipped that whole part. The last book that I finished in May was Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This is my first Grady Hendrix. Um, again, listened to it on audio, loved it. I thought I had this book figured out. I did not. This one is different than Final Girls by uh, Riley Sager. This is older women who survived like a traumatic killing and they are technically final girls, the media has coined them that, but they are older and it's it's really like a meta look at how we monetize female trauma and horror movies always have to have a final girl and you know, the gory or the better and how that makes more money, all these different things. So it was very like, looking at like, why are you a horror fan? Why do you like watching these things that are so traumatic when they happen in real life to real people? Like monetizing their trauma is not entertainment kind of thing. Like these based off true stories kind of horror movies. So I really liked that. There were so many elements and so many cool characters, again, that I just listened to it and I was eating it up. Um, I think I finished it in a day or like a day and a half to be quite honest. So I'm excited to read more Grady Hendrix and his brand of horror because I think it's very different than some of the other stuff because I've realized I'm not a huge fan of Riley Sager. I've liked a couple things but not everything. So I think maybe I like Grady Hendrix more meta look at horror. I don't know. It was funny. It was witty and it felt like they got like the manic sort of mindset correct even though the plot was super convoluted and kind of like, whoa, what's happening by the end? It was the perfect amount of ridiculous that matches modern horror movies. So if you're a modern horror movie fan, this is a good book. In June, I finished a book I had started in March 
And that was Hunt on Dark Water by Katie Robert. And I have just decided Katie Robert and I are not friends. I enjoyed some of the books from her Wicked Villain series, was really excited for this like smutty pirate witch story, right? That's not what this was. It did not, it just felt boring to me. And I know it's a series and this was book one. The world building was great. The romance was not. I could not get into it. I wanted them to be more angsty. Like don't pitch me enemies to lovers if there's not going to be a fair amount of angst. And there was like no angst in here. There was like this much. And then it all went away far too quickly. And it's only 317 pages. But I feel like we could have done better, especially since it's a series. There's going to be another book. We could have given me a little more slow burn, you know? So I gave this three stars and I'm unhauling it. So it's going to be on my Pango, which is always linked down below. Any books I don't like that I have physically are listed on there. And there's a bunch on there right now. Next, I read Yours Truly, which I have already rehomed because I did not like this book. Everyone said it was amazing. I did not care for it. I gave it three stars because the first 20 chapters were good. After that, I just wanted to get through the book. I knew how it ended. It had been spoiled for me before. Um, it has one of my very least favorite tropes and romance in it. And it hit really late in the book. So there was no room for redemption for me. If that trope had not been included, I probably would have loved it. But the third act breakup felt very rushed and just, it's like a doctor drama, like a two doctors. And there's all these different things that happen that make it heartwarming and wonderful. And then that, that trope hit and I was over it. So yeah, and I wasn't like a super big fan of Abby Jimenez's writing, how she wrote like all the characters. The main character felt whiny. I and I don't like whiny. I don't do whiny. So yeah, I'm not sure that I'll read any more of her books in this universe, but I'll give it my best shot, I guess. Listen to Good Girl Bad Blood, which is the second book in this series for Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I liked this one. I gave it a 3.5. This is a current day missing persons case where Pip is using her platform to try and help her friend find their missing brother. Love the concept, love the idea, but the reveal, the end of the whole thing did not feel fully done. Again, it felt very half-baked and almost like, a, ooh, you didn't see that coming and I very much saw it coming. Um, I think Mel kind of described it as, if you guys watch Mel Reads, um, felt very like Scooby-Doo, like if it weren't for those meddling kids, like ah, sort of thing. That's how that felt, to be quite honest. And it, it was just like, oh, didn't you realize this connection or this thing or whatever? Like the kind of villain monologue happened. And I was like, okay, dude, like, whatever, you know, it just felt a little bit Pretty Little Liars after season five, where Good Girl's Guide to Murder felt Pretty Little Liars seasons one through two. So that's kind of where I ended up with it. Uh, but I'm going to continue the series still. I'm still going to continue the series. Uh, then I read Wonder Woman, the new 52 volume five. I'm not going to tell you too much about this other than it was a great continuation of the series and I gave it a four star because there's not enough time to explain all the lore. Then I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I'm getting caught up on all these hyped books. I gave it three stars. I don't know if it's because I've been reading more thrillers lately uh, or you know I've been just I'm smarter than I used to be but every single one of them I was kind of like I know who did it. I We haven't talked enough to this character. I know who did it. Like, I figured out the twist pretty early. I enjoyed the concept of this kind of, I know what you did last summer, but it was like 10 years ago sort of thing happening. And this 
like this kind of click from college coming back together where everything seems perfect and then it very much isn't. I enjoyed that aspect, but I feel like again every I feel like every thriller is doing and then there were none. Like everyone has a motive, but who really carried out the murder, you know? That all is getting very tired to me and I'm not liking it. So if you have more complex thrillers, uh, please let me know down below because I'm sick of all the same tropes and all the same plots with different characters in different settings. And the last book I read in June was First Lie Wins and I gave it a 4.5. I loved the concept of this book. The con artist, the different personalities, the hidden personality of who did what, I really enjoyed. It felt very like True Lies and Charlie's Angels, uh, but the romance was good and kind of hit in a way that I didn't expect it to. Um, and the end was just like, we support women's rights, but we also support women's wrongs, you know? I love the concept. I like how they used different people for different things, how she was always, she was such a smart character. The main character was such a smart character. And I adored that because, and she was likable. She was supposed to be dislikable, but I really, I, I really liked her, even though she was supposed to be unlikable, not dislikable. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was it. I gave that a 4.5 star. So let's talk about current reads. Right now I'm reading Butcher and Blackbird. I'm only like 40 pages in. I'm obsessed with this. I think it's hilarious in like a really dark and twisted way. So far, loving it. Haven't got to like the real like meat and potatoes, you know, but we'll get there. Liking it. I'm still reading The Kitchen Witch, which is more of like a nonfiction informative one. So taking my time there. Uh, but I have read 56 books, including DNFs, only 52 without. I've finished two series so far this year and I've DNF three series. Um, so I'm on to my next reading goals, which we will talk about in my next TBR. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you're reading. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.